Hello friends, this is Sanjay. In today's video, we will cover the 30 EVS questions from the CTET paper 1 from December 2021 examination. This specific paper was conducted on the 3rd of January of 2022. As you might be aware, the December 2021 examination was conducted in an online mode and the exams started on the 16th of December 2021 and uh, they were conducted all the way till the 21st of January of 2022. So there were 23 different uh, days on which the exam was conducted. So there are 23 different paper ones that can be solved. Since each of these papers have 30 questions for each subject, we will be solving 690 EVS questions in this series. So let's get started. Which of the following animals front teeth keep growing throughout its life? Now this question has been taken from the class 4 EVS, a busy month chapter. In that it is mentioned that a squirrel's front teeth keep growing throughout their life and they have to keep gnawing or chewing on things to keep their teeth from becoming too long. And this is also true for other rodents like rats. When it comes to rats and squirrels, unless and until they keep eating something or chewing something constantly, their teeth will eventually grow to such an extent that they will be unable to close their mouth and they will die. Therefore. You would have noticed that rats and squirrels do a lot of damage because they are chewing up so many things. So here the correct answer is squirrel. If there was an option rat, then rat also would be a correct answer here. Identify the most suitable characteristics from the given option about honeybee. Now this question has been taken from class 4 EVS chapter 5 Anita and the honeybees. And this is also a general awareness question because uh, if we read the answer choices, we will be able to identify the correct statements. Now in a bee hive, there are three types of bees. There is a queen bee, which is the female bee. And then there are the male bees, which stay inside the hive and they just help in fertilizing the eggs and they don't do anything else. And there are the worker bees. So these worker bees are the bees that we normally see outside the hive. These go to the various flowers and they bring uh, nectar which gets converted into honey inside the hive. So now when we look at uh, the answer choices or uh, the statements, we see that first one says only the queen bee lays eggs. This is a correct statement because only the queen bee is the female which lays eggs. And then male bees have no special role as workers. Now this is also a correct statement because male bees just help in fertilizing the eggs and they do not do anything else. Now the next one is all female bee lay eggs. Now this is incorrect because only the queen is the female bee in the hive that lays eggs. Then the last one is worker bees look for food and bring it to the beehive. This is correct because worker bees go out and bring food into the hive. So since A, B and D are correct, the option 3 A, B and D is the correct answer here. People who have been living in the forest for at least 25 years have a right over the forest land and what is grown in it. This act is derived from which of the following. Now this question has been taken from class 5 EVS chapter called whose forests in which it is mentioned that the right to forest act of 2007 says that people who have been living in the forest for at least 25 years such as the tribals who live in the forests. So they have a right over the forest land and uh, they can extract whatever is naturally grown in the forest. There are some limits in the sense they cannot uh, start cutting trees and they cannot uh, just start hunting animals. They can make use of some of the forest produce and uh, they have the right to use it for their own consumption and sell it as well. So these rights are given by the right to forest act of 2007. So this is the correct answer. Zoom farming is which of the following. Now zoom farming is a type of farming that is uh, practiced in the northeastern states of uh, India. Now in this type of farming the weeds or the bamboos which uh, naturally grow on the land are actually just slashed right they are uh, slashed with a sharp knife or a, a sharp instrument and they are burnt on the land itself and the ash becomes a fertilizer which makes the land more fertile. After that crops are grown and after one round of crops are grown the land is not uh, disturbed there is there are no more crops grown for at least a couple of years and after which the land rejuvenates and uh, as uh, more weeds and bamboos grow on that again the cycle is started they again cut all the weeds and the bamboos which have naturally grown there they burn them 
and they grow their crops. So this type of farming is called zoom farming. It is also called slash and burn farming. So this is the correct answer. And this question has been taken from the class 5 EVS chapter 20, Whose Forests? Ronald Ross received a Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1902 for discovering that which of the options. Now, Ronald Ross was uh, a British doctor who was serving in India in the Indian Medical Service during the British Raj. And he looked into the stomach of uh, a mosquito through a microscope and uh, he saw that uh, they were harboring the malarial parasites. Therefore, he was able to identify and prove that mosquitoes actually spread malaria. And he received a Nobel Prize for this. Therefore, the correct answer here is malaria is transmitted by mosquito and that is the correct answer. And this question has been taken from the class 5 EVS chapter A Treat for Mosquitoes. Which of the following part of the synchona tree is used to treat malaria? Now this uh, question has been taken from the class 5 EVS uh, chapter A Treat for Mosquitoes. But this is also a general awareness question because uh, we often hear that uh, malaria is treated using a medicine called quinine and quinine is made from the synchona tree and the bark of the tree that is the skin the outer skin of the tree is actually used to make the medicine called quinine which is used to treat malaria therefore the answer here is bark and this is also given in the chapter as well where it says that uh, from early times the dried and powdered bark of the synchona tree was used to make a medicine to treat malaria poisonous teeth of snakes are called what this question has been taken from class 5 evs a snake charmer's story now snakes have sharp hollow teeth through which the poison or the venom is injected when they bite and these are called fangs so the correct answer here is fangs which of the following is a non-poisonous snake found in India? Now this question has been taken from the class 5 EVS chapter, a snake charmer's story. But this question can also be answered by just reading through the answer choices. As you know, python is a snake which is not poisonous. Right? And Indian rock python. So it clearly indicates that this python is found in India. Therefore, this has to be the correct answer. Now the other options that is viper, viper and crate are actually poisonous snakes. Therefore, the correct answer here is Indian rock python and the same information is also given in the chapter. Vermicomposting is a method of composting that uses which of the following. So vermicomposting is a way of uh, creating natural fertilizer. So now this question has been taken from class 5 EVS. A seed tells a farmer story in which it is mentioned that uh, the kitchen waste that is peels of vegetables and fruits are actually put out and uh, they are buried so that the earthworms can eat that food and uh, they turn it into natural fertilizer which is called compost. Now the correct answer here is earthworm and this is also a general knowledge question because uh, you'd be able to see that tapeworm and hookworm are actually parasites and leeches actually drink blood and only earthworm can help in composting or creating fertilizer. Therefore, the correct answer is earthworm. Pashmina is a variety of wool obtained from which animal? Now, Pashmina is uh, a variety of wool that is uh, very famous because of its uh, fine texture and quality. right? And uh, this type of uh, soft wool is uh, actually obtained from goats. It is not sheep, it is not camel, it is not alpaca. It is a type of goat that is found in very high altitudes, such as uh, near Kashmir. So the answer is goat. Incomplete burning of fossil fuels emits which of the following? Now this question has been taken from the class 8 science chapter combustion and flame, where it is mentioned that incomplete combustion of uh, these fuels, which are fossil fuels, gives carbon monoxide gas, which is a very poisonous gas. Now carbon monoxide is CO. So the correct answer here is CO. So fossil fuels are uh, fuels like uh, petrol, diesel, kerosene or uh, natural gas. So when they are not completely burnt, when they are not efficiently burnt, then they release a high amount of uh, carbon monoxide which is poisonous. 
a technique of watering plants by making use of uh, narrow tubing which delivers waters uh, directly to the base of the plant is called what now this is uh, both a general awareness or a general knowledge question which can be answered by looking at the answer choices or you can also refer to the class 7 science textbook chapter water a precious resource and here it is mentioned that drip irrigation is a technique of watering plants by making use of narrow tubing which deliver water directly to the base of the plant now as you would have seen in uh, many farms they use pipes and these pipes are pointed right near the base or the bottom part of the plant and these pipes will deliver the water and sometimes even fertilizer is uh, mixed with uh, the water itself and it is delivered directly to the plant, plant rather than just flowing all through the field so that is called drip irrigation because it drips drop by drop so the answer here is drip irrigation which of the following plants traps and eats insects? Now this is a very important question because almost every year there is at least one question about the pitcher plant or it is also called the nepenthes. So the answer here is pitcher plant. The pitcher plant actually has a pitcher like thing and it has some nectar inside it. So what happens is because of the smell that is emitted by the nectar Insects such as uh, flies and sometimes even uh, small uh, rodents, they'll come into this and they will enter. And once it enters, it has a leaf-like thing on the top which shuts and traps the insect inside. And then there are digestive juices inside the, the pitcher itself which help in digesting the insect or the small rodents or the small frogs which uh, fall into this pitcher. So the plant can actually trap and eat insects and it is called the pitcher plant or nepenthes. Collection of rainwater for future use is called what? Now this is a very very simple and straightforward question because you already know that rainwater harvesting is the process by which rainwater is collected and stored and it is used during the later months such as the dry seasons. So the correct answer here is rainwater harvesting. And by the way this question has also been taken from the class 6 science textbook that is from a chapter called water in which there is a mention of uh, collecting rainwater and it is called rainwater harvesting. Which of the following diseases is spread by mosquitoes? Now this question has been taken from the EVS class uh, 5 textbook from a chapter called a treat for mosquitoes where it is mentioned that uh, mosquitoes spread malaria, dengue and chikungunya. And this is also a common sense question or a general knowledge question because when you look at the answer choices you see that pneumonia is not actually spread by mosquitoes and malaria, dengue and chikungunya are actually spread by mosquitoes. Therefore, the answer should have A, C and D in it. So, A, C, D will be the correct answer. Child-centered classrooms ensure conducive environment for students to learn. Which of the following suggests the same? Now, this uh, question can be answered by looking at uh, the introduction part that is a note for teachers and parents from the class 5 EVS textbook where it is mentioned that uh, this textbook is child centered so that the child gets a lot of uh, space to explore and are not compelled to learn by rote. And also when you look at this question it is talking about child centered classrooms. So here we have to see which one of the options gives the maximum opportunity for the child to learn and drive the learning and teaching process and which one of them are controlled directly by the teacher. Right? So the one that is controlled more by the child is child centric and the one that is controlled more by the teacher is teacher centric. So when we look at it the first one says teacher gives instructions and expects the students to obey and be disciplined. Now this everything is being controlled by the teacher therefore this is teacher centric therefore this cannot be the answer choice. Next teacher reads the textbook writes questions and answers on the blackboard. So here again, teacher is doing everything. Therefore, this is again teacher centric, not child centric. So this be eliminated. Next, teacher provides learning situations that give students an opportunity to observe, explore, question, experience and develop an understanding of the various concepts. That is, the teacher is only providing a situation and the rest of the learning is being done by the students themselves. So they have an opportunity to observe, explore, question, experience and develop an understanding of the subject that the teacher wants to teach. Therefore, this is child centric because a lot of these activities are being controlled by the child. Now the next one, the last one is 
teacher controls what happens in the classroom so this again is teacher controlled or it is teacher centric therefore this can be eliminated in class 5 chapter across the wall a teacher arif allow students to share experiences of sports they play which of the following best explains his attempts now this question can be answered by looking at all the answer choices or if you have read the teacher's note in the class 5 evs textbook from a chapter called across the wall it is mentioned there that uh, by conducting such an activity the teacher is essentially building on the child's understanding on issues such as similar games for boys and girls and equal opportunities for all while playing etc so when we look at the answer choices we see that the third option that is develop an understanding of issues like similar games for boys and girls and equal opportunities for all and team spirit so this is directly mentioned in the textbook therefore this is the correct answer and even if we were to not read the information in the textbook and if you look at the answer choices we see that uh, there are probably more than one correct answer here that is to develop an understanding of sports rules not exactly because we are not trying to understand about any specific sport here therefore this is a incorrect option and develop values related to sports this is partially correct because team work team spirit are all values related to sports therefore this is partially correct and then the next one develop an understanding of issues like similar games and all this is definitely correct and the last one is develop an ability to share personal experience this is also correct because children are sharing their personal experience now when we look at the three possible correct answers and we try to put them in an order as to which one of them is the strongest possible answer then this third one is the strongest possible answer right therefore this has to be the correct answer which of the following is the most suitable to transact evs in primary classrooms now we have to identify which of these methods is the best one to teach evs in primary classrooms now this can be answered by reading the ncert continuous and comprehensive evaluation guidelines where it talks about uh, approaches like uh, inquiry discussion project exploration that help uh, in evs teaching and learning process therefore inquiry based teaching has to be the correct answer therefore this is the correct answer and even when we look at the answer choices the first one is lecture method now lecture method is where the teacher is standing in one place and giving a lecture and expecting the students to understand it now this is primary students right they will get bored so lecture method is definitely not useful for teaching anything to primary school method teach uh, primary school children therefore this can be eliminated next chalk and talk method so chalk and talk method is where uh, the teacher is actually using a chalk to write something on the blackboard and trying to teach a subject now again here this is just a development or a extension of the lecture method because here the teacher is not just talking but writing something on the board again this will be quite boring for children therefore this can be eliminated and the last one is jug and mug approach now jug and mug, mug approach means that the teacher is like a jug in which there is a store of knowledge and the children are like a mug into which the teacher will pour the knowledge so now this is again primary school children so children will not be so eager to take the knowledge from the teacher therefore the jug and mug approach will definitely not work here therefore this also can be eliminated so that leaves us with only one option that is inquiry based teaching that is you are encouraging the children to question things to explore things to experiment and learn therefore inquiry based based uh, teaching is the correct answer here and the same thing is also written in the answer documents as well field visits are important in evs teaching which of the following is true for such visits now the importance of uh, field visits is something that is very apparent because if you look at uh, the class uh, 3 4 and 5 evs textbooks there are several mentions of uh, field visits or uh, field trips being mentioned as uh, teaching and learning activities now what we are being asked is which of the following is true for such visits so let's look at the options the first one says going to a place near a school with pre planning and follow up activity now it doesn't matter where you are going you can go to a place near the school or far away it can be any place it can be a zoo it can be a market it can be a factory so you are taking the children there to teach something so when you are taking the children to teach something there is a definite plan so pre planning is necessary and after coming back 
you are going to have some follow up activity like asking the children to write a report or even just narrate what they saw or what they learnt in their own words so after coming back you will do some follow up activity so going to a place is a field visit but the field visit should have some pre planning and follow up activity and this is true and important so this has to be the correct answer now if you look at the other options the next one says going to a distant and well known place now as i said it doesn't matter whether you go to a nearby place or a place that is very far away so this is not necessarily true or important therefore this can be discarded next going to a nearby place now again nearby place or a very far place doesn't matter so this can be discarded the last one is going to a place of your choice so how does it matter any place that you go to is a place of your choice somebody is acting actually making a decision somebody is making a choice therefore this is a meaningless option so the first option going to a place near the school with pre planning and follow up activity is the best answer among the choices an evs classroom should be a happy classroom which one of the following statements is true in this regard now if you have uh, referred to the cise environmental studies at a primary level guideline document there it is uh, clearly written that an evs classroom should be child centered and happy classroom where the child gets an opportunity to observe explore ask questions do activity share experiences etc so which means that uh, a classroom where uh, the child gets a lot of opportunities to do a lot of interesting things right and where they are not restricted and uh, where there is no unnecessary discipline or uh, unnecessary pressure being applied to them so just such a classroom it will be a happy classroom now if you look at the answer choices we just have to identify which one of them gives the maximum amount of freedom to children right the first one says teacher remains happy and the teacher students follow her instructions happily now which means that the teacher is giving instructions and the children have to follow the instructions now it might not necessary that uh, it is not necessary that they will happily follow the instructions right so the students don't seem to have much freedom in this situation so this cannot be the answer choice next one administers strict discipline so that they remain focused on written works now if there is strict discipline then there is minimum freedom or minimal freedom therefore this cannot be an answer choice the third one is observe explore ask questions and do activities now this essentially is indicating that children have a lot of opportunity or a lot of freedom to do things and to learn from their experiences therefore this has to be the correct answer and this is precisely what is written even here as well to observe explore ask questions do activities right therefore this has to be the correct answer the last one is ensure that they read the book and underline the text for better comprehension now this again is a very very uh, strict activity right you are asking them to read a book and underline the text therefore this will not give children too much of a happiness therefore this also can be eliminated a family tree is a useful tool for developing analytical thinking among children so you have to identify which of these statements is correct about a family tree now this is a depiction of a family tree where you are actually charting the relationship between different generations of the family and different uh, uh, branches of the family for example this is dada dadi and these are all dada dadis children and their uh, uh, spouses and this is nana nani and you are looking at how the nana nani are actually connected to dada dadi through some of the younger generation and this is the youngest generation right so this is a family tree now if you look at uh, the answer choices the first one says it is about joint family and their relationships now a family is a family it necessarily is should not need not be a joint family for example dada dadi and nana nani might be staying in separate houses but they are still part of a family and a family tree is not necessarily about a joint family therefore this is incorrect the next one is it is only about the immediate family members this is also incorrect because you can draw a family tree as widely as possible in the sense if you want to include the previous generation and uh, your cousins and cousins relatives and all that you can make the tree as extensive as possible so it need not be only about the immediate family members it is about your extended family also therefore this is incorrect the next one is it is only about grandparents of the family and their relationship between the other family members not necessarily you can add your cousins you can add your distant relatives also into it as long as you can trace what is the relationship between your family members and the 
other relatives therefore a family tree is not only about grandpa parents and the family therefore this also is incorrect especially since you can also add your great grandparents also into this right the last one it pertains to relationship between the members of the family across several generations now this is a correct statement because the basic attribute that you can see in a family tree is you can see multiple generations this is the first generation dada dadi nana nani then there is the second generation which is their children and then there is a third generation which is their grandchildren therefore this is the correct statement an indicator for assessment in evs is which of the following now what is an indicator an indicator is something that helps you evaluate or measure something right for example you have a speedometer in your bike or in your car so what is the speedometer indicating it is just indicating at what speed is the car or bike currently traveling therefore anything which can indicate how well the child is actually learning something right is an indicator now this question can be answered by general awareness or if you have read the ncert class 5 evs introduction that is a note for teachers and parents there there is a list of indicators for assessment in evs and if you look at uh, the options and compare them against the list there is a discussion which is mentioned as one of the indicators therefore this has to be the correct answer this question can also be answered through common sense that is one of the fundamental attributes about evs is that memorization or rote learning is discouraged and discussion exploration experimentation and uh, hands on experience are encouraged in evs now when we look at the answer choices the first one is discussion so discussion is giving the child an opportunity to express himself or herself therefore this has to be the correct answer the next one is recalling so recalling is where the child has actually memorized something so this is rote learning and the child is just repeating what he or she has learned therefore this cannot be an indicator for assessment next stating stating is again like recalling right so you have memorized something and you are stating it back therefore this also cannot be an answer choice the next one is listing listing is definitely memorization you have a list you have mugged up the list and you are repeating it when the teacher asks you therefore this cannot be an indicator for assessment therefore this also is eliminated as per the evs standards right any indicator which allows the child to express himself or herself is the indicator for assessment therefore here discussion is the best answer under the theme mapping for class 3 which activity would be most appropriate for the students now if you look at the four activities that are mentioned here drawing a sketch of their house to drawing the route from their home to the school or drawing the diagram of their classroom or drawing a sketch of their neighborhood so all of these are probably mapping related activities so now here we have to identify which one of them are appropriate for class 3 students now the first one is ask them to draw a sketch of their house because children spend a better part of the day at their house they'll be very familiar with their house so this might be a correct answer so let's mark it and leave it for now let's look at look at the next one the next one says ask them to draw the route from their home to the school now class 3 students they probably come by bus to the school or their child, parents will be dropping them to the school or they come by auto so it means that they personally will not be so familiar or will not remember the route from their home to school therefore this cannot be appropriate for class 3 students next ask them to draw a diagram of their classroom this also is appropriate right so let's park it because when they are in the classroom they can look around and they can draw a map of their diagram of their classroom so this can also be correct now the next one is ask them to draw a sketch of their neighborhood again we are talking about class 3 children here class 3 children are not let to are not normally allowed to go out on their own and explore their neighborhood they will go out with their parents or somebody uh, from their family an elder person is actually taking them out their brother sister uncle aunt or somebody so which means that the children at grade 3 or class 3 might not be so familiar with their neighborhood to be able to draw a sketch of their neighborhood therefore this also is incorrect so now we have two options sketch of the house or diagram of the classroom now this activity right is being conducted in a classroom so the best thing to do is if you ask the children to draw a diagram of the classroom 
then the children can just look around right and they can look at the classroom and they can draw a diagram so this is the easiest activity as far as mapping is concerned for class 3 children therefore this is the most appropriate activity now this can also be answered by referring to the ncrt class uh, 3 uh, syllabus document right class 3 to 5 syllabus document evs syllabus document because it is mentioned that uh, in mapping they should begin in class 3 through a basic two dimensional representation of their classroom and then they will progress to other things therefore even in the evs syllabus document the representation of the classroom is mentioned therefore this is the correct option a teacher has to teach the sub theme animals to class 3 students which of the following strategy is most appropriate to transact this theme to the learner now one of the things in EVS is that there is a lot of emphasis or importance given to actual observation, exploration, experimentation and hands-on activities. And memorization is actually not encouraged in EVS. So now when you look at the answer choices, the first one says ask students to list out the name of animals. Now this is memorization, right? Therefore, this cannot be an answer choice. Next, tell the names of animals to the students. Now, when you are telling the names of animals to the students, they are just words. So, students can't understand what exactly are you referring to. For example, if I tell you a sloth, right? unless you know what a sloth is, you won't be able to relate to it. Therefore, just telling names of uh, animals to students is a meaningless exercise. So, this cannot be a good activity. And next is, take students on a trip to the zoo to give them concrete experience. Now, this is hands-on activity, right? Here, the children can go to the zoo, they can observe the animals in real life. And then they'll be able to remember it for a much longer time and they'll be able to understand what this animal is all about. Because in a book, an elephant as a picture will probably be just as uh, big as uh, a duck. So, if you just show them pictures and say, this is an elephant, this is a duck, they probably will think both of them are in the same size. But only when they go to the zoo, they can see that elephant is much bigger than a duck, right? Therefore, taking students on a trip to the zoo to give them a concrete experience is the best way to teach about animals to class 3 students. Therefore, this has to be the correct answer. The last one is, shows colored photographs of a variety of animals to give them an understanding about animals. This again, as I mentioned, when you show a photograph, they can probably just identify that animal However, they don't get a real picture of or a real understanding of how big or small this animal is in real life. Therefore, a two-dimensional photograph does not meet the same kind of learning experience as taking children to a zoo. Therefore, the last one can be eliminated. Now, even when you look at uh, the NCRT class uh, 3 EVS textbook and uh, look at the teacher's notes, it is mentioned that encourage children to look carefully at animals and make pictures on their own. So, where can children actually look carefully at animals? They can look at them only in a zoo. Therefore, this is a correct answer. Dr. Beaumont's experiments help students in understanding the role of a scientist. Arrange the steps given below of scientific method in a proper sequence. Now, Dr. Beaumont was a doctor and he was a scientist. And uh, in this particular lesson, that is class 5 EVS chapter 3, that is from tasting to digesting story, a stomach with a window. Here, there is a mention of this person called Dr. Beaumont, who had a patient who had uh, an injury in his uh, abdomen. Therefore, uh, people could actually see through his abdomen into his uh, internal organs. And uh, Dr. Beaumont could uh, make use of this opportunity to understand a lot more about uh, how digestion actually happens in a human body. Right? But this question is not about Dr. Beaumont's experiments. This is just asking us that if you are using a scientific method, such as conducting an experiment, then what is the proper sequence of steps that you will be using? So this can be answered on the basis of reading this particular chapter, because there are some steps that Dr. Beaumont would have followed. So you can follow the same sequence of steps here. Or even if you look at the answer choices, you'll be able to identify which one should come first in the sequence and which should come after that. That is, you'll be able to identify the proper sequence of these six steps. For example, the first step would be to make an observation. Right? For example, you step out of your house and you see that there is an eagle flying in the sky. So you are making an observation. 
so that should be the first one that is 6 and then you actually ask a question right that is after making an observation you ask a question so that should come 3 the question should be like why is this bird flying how is this bird flying right and after you ask a question you propose a hypothesis that is oh this bird has wings so that might be the reason why it is flying so you are proposing a hypothesis too and then you make a prediction so if a bird has wings and it can fly then if i make a model and put wings on it then that can probably fly so you are making a prediction so that will be five and you actually make the model and you try to make it fly right? so then you are testing your prediction right? and when you do that experiment you will see whether it is flying not flying if you make the wings too small it might not fly if you make the wings too big it might not fly if you kind of make medium sized wings it might fly so you are working with the experiment and you are recording the results and based on those results you will come to a conclusion that whether this flies or doesn't fly therefore after you make the prediction you are going to test the prediction and then you are going to record the results and draw conclusion so this is the proper sequence of steps that will be followed in a scientific method now 632541 632541 is the correct answer here the best strategy of giving students the experience of biological diversity is which of the following now again the fundamental way of teaching EVS is you should encourage actual observation, actual experimentation and hands-on activities and you should discourage rote learning and theoretical learning. Now, when you look at uh, the four options, you see the first is give them books and articles to study about bird species. Now, this is just theoretical knowledge. Therefore, this can be discarded. Next is show them documentaries on migratory birds, which is good. This is better than just giving them books and expecting, to, expecting them to study. But this also is more theoretical. So this also can be discarded. The next one is take them to a bird sanctuary for observing. Now, this is actually hands on and real time experience because the children are actually getting to see birds in real life and observe them. Right? Therefore, this is the best strategy of giving them an experience of biological diversity. Therefore, this is the correct answer. The last one is giving talks and lectures on endangered birds. Now, if you are just giving them some talks and lectures on endangered birds, then this again is mere theory. Therefore, we can discard the theory. Now, if you look at the four options, the most practical and the most hands-on and the most real-life activity is the third one, which is taking the children to a bird sanctuary for observation. So, this has to be the correct answer because in EVS, there is an importance given to practical activities. Now, even when we look at uh, the class 3 textbook, uh, a chapter called Flying High and uh, the class 4 textbook, a chapter called A Busy Month. In both these chapters, it is uh, written that in order to develop children's interest in birds, let them observe the birds and children should be encouraged to observe the birds. So, observation is the correct answer. Aditya is a gifted boy and feels his class teachers should cater to his curiosity. What intervention is his teacher required to make? Now, if Aditya is a gifted boy, then the teachers should make sure that uh, the boy gets all the avenues and all the opportunities to learn as fast as he can because he seems to be faster than the other children in his class. He seems to be learning more things or he is probably learning uh, uh, at a much faster pace as compared to other children. Therefore, teachers should make every effort to make sure that his uh, gifts are actually nurtured. Now, if we refer to the national education policy of uh, 2020, right, there is a particular section which talks about support for gifted students and students with special talents. And here it is mentioned that teachers will aim to encourage students with singular interests or talents in the classroom by giving them supplementary enrichment material and guidance and encouragement. So when we look at the answer choices, extra time is not supplementary material, being more affectionate to him is again not supplementary material and giving him extra responsibility of leading the class is also not supplementary material. The last one, using customized material to teach him, 
that is more advanced material as compared to the other students this is the correct answer as per the national education policy therefore this is the correct answer here which one of the following is a part of environmental studies now this is a little tricky question because uh, all the options look correct because as we know environmental studies is uh, nothing but a mixture or an integration of uh, sciences social sciences and environmental education so now if we look at the first one it says issues concerning science and social sciences so this is a correct option next one is concepts of environmental education this is also correct issues and concerns of social sciences this is also correct and the last one issues and concerns of social inequalities so this is also correct so now if we are faced with a situation where there are four correct answers or more than one correct answers right so then we should uh, identify which one is more comprehensive which one covers the most number of aspects now this one covers only social inequalities this one covers only social sciences this one is talking only about environmental education whereas the first option is talking about science and social sciences so here two aspects are covered therefore this is more comprehensive so this has to be the correct answer dramatization is considered as a good method for teaching and learning of evs for slow learners which of the following is the most appropriate reason for selecting dramatization for them now dramatization or teaching something or teaching a concept through drama or stories now this is not just a good method of teaching and learning for evs for slow learners but it is a good method of teaching any subject to all small children because if you just tell them some theory that is if they hear some theory then they forget but if they see something then they will remember it for a much longer time but they if they do something then they will understand it therefore if you make them act something if you dramatize something if you build a story around it then there is a better chance of them actually understanding and remembering those concepts so now if you look at uh, the three statements the first one says traditional drama technique makes it easier for them to relate to a concept this is true because a concept which is a theory you are actually converting it into a drama or a story so they can see it being acted out or they can actually act in it therefore this traditional drama technique can make concepts more easy to understand so this is a correct statement next interactive drama stays with students memory for long this is also true because if they are interacting then they are doing something so if they do they will understand therefore this is also a correct statement the last one is slow learners enjoy acting a lot now why is this in a sense uh, this is an absolutely meaningless statement because you are saying that just because somebody is a slow learner that person likes to act well even uh, fast learners also might uh, enjoy acting or even slow learners might not enjoy acting so this statement doesn't make any sense whatsoever so since c is wrong let's look at the answer choices and see that if any of the options has c in it then that will be an incorrect option so last one has c in it therefore this is incorrect this has c incorrect this has c incorrect only option number 1 a and b does not have c and we have already seen that statements a and b are actually correct therefore the correct answer has to be the first one evs textbooks support students in which of the following ways now this question can be easily answered if we read the class 5 evs textbook introduction that is a note for teachers and parents there it is clearly written that active participation of children is very important in constructing knowledge right and the writing team looks not only at the children but also teachers as individuals who construct knowledge and build on their own experiences so if you look at the options the first one says memorize the issues and concerns of evs subject now memorization or just uh, rote learning is discouraged in evs so this cannot be the correct answer next describe the issues and concerns of evs subject this is true and uh, let's park this for a while the next one construct knowledge through all the issues now this is more true than the previous one because this is what is specifically written in the introduction part as well saying that the purpose of this textbook is to help children in constructing knowledge and to construct knowledge therefore this has to be the correct answer and the last one is respond to the issues and concerns of evs subject now this is also a correct statement so these three options are correct however when we compare 
2, 3 and 4. The third one is the best option. And this is also specifically mentioned in the introduction part as the objective of this textbook. Therefore, we will select that. And with that, we come to the end of this video because we have uh, completed all the 30 questions in uh, this question paper. And I will see you again in the next video. So if you have any comments, questions or feedback, please post them in the section below. And please do like this video and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos that we will be posting in this series. And if your friends are preparing for the same exam, please do share this video with them so that it will help them and it will also help us. So thank you and I will see you again very soon. So take care and stay safe.